So the question I pose to Matt Steele and everyone on Twitch is, can we get Oscars for Twitch yet? Don't believe that will ever happen. <laughs> hey, you never know. Well, Netflix, I, Apple just won a fucking best picture. Yeah, but that also because like it released in theaters as well. Mm. And, I, we could Twitch in a theater. And Lord knows by the time like the Academy will like be like, oh, maybe let's consider Twitch and everything. Twitch will be long gone. Like Twitch <laughs> will be a know. thing of the past. Girl, I mean, the, I'm sure Twitch will last a long time, but I like so. the Oscars run long. Like they they are not quick to make changes. Mm. So. I mean, I guess we'll see. Well, honestly, the first mistake I made was bringing up the Oscars <laughs> because like, we made a promise. Not that the only thing we can talk about for the Oscars is the moment, but I f feel like I've painted myself into a corner already. You did it to yourself. I love how I'm rubbing off on you and this year has rubbed off on you. I hate that. This is kind of like the year when you had movie pass and you <laughs> actually saw like the Oscar hey. movies and everything. And I was so excited and I was like, this is Matt Palmer's future. And then it wasn't. You got rid of movie pass real quick. I mean, wh why did I get rid of it? <laughs> <laughs> you can talk about that. You know what? Never do things for someone you're dating. That's all I'll say. <laughs> Just be you and the person that will date. Let them be them. And you can meet in the middle. But don't go too far. Don't do things you wouldn't do. On your own. You act as if like, oh, getting movie pass was just so. It was traumatizing, <laughs> darling. It was a part of the trauma. It's, it's like against your, you know, morals or something <laughs> hey, like that. Just like Jamie Lee Curtis describing that last Halloween mo movie. It's about trauma. <laughs> movie pass. It's about trauma. Mm. <laughs> you ain't the one. Hi, everybody. Welcome back to 2K Matt's The Podcast. It's Matt Palmer. And it's Matt Steele. I almost said it's Matt Steele. Is that not crazy? Uh, it is crazy because you can never be me. Okay. Well, I am feeling warm in this room. I'm feeling insane. But I'm also happy that we're here together. I am wearing the sweater. Okay. That's true. I'm wearing a little crab shirt if you're just listening. It's very cute, but it's... I'm still hot. Hey, I. but you know what? I'm going to plow through it. I'm going to act my face off and pretend like everything is cool <laughs> and calm and collected, even though I am sweltering Look. and in a very rough stage of my life right now. <laughs> okay, rough stage of your life, meaning well, I, we'll just go into it. You just had some technological issues. Nothing bad has happened to you personally. You seem to be bringing the drama a bit today. What happened? But you know how like technological issues like really stress me out. You don't think they stress me out? Have you watched our Twitches, darling? I know, but you're better at like resolving technology issues, whereas like mm. I'm really bad at it. I sit here and you're doing all the technology stuff, and, and I'm it's just lot. like really, I'm just like, oh, thank God it's not me. <laughs> but anyway, so um, what happened to me this week? Yes. Um, so I was in the midst of doing my taxes because you know I waited till kind of the last I minute. Mean, of course. Um, well, I wasn't like actually in the process of doing the taxes. I was all year long. I ha I am responsible. I have the Excel spreadsheet Ooh. where I like have all my write-offs and everything. You're better than me because I had to go through line by line going through my Wells Fargo, my uh, Amex. It was a moment. See, I do it all year long, but Good also, of course, right before I do taxes, which is always the last minute, <laughs> um, I am like, let me double check everything because I'm just that person. Okay. And so I always end up doing like twice the amount of work that I've already put in the entire year. Yeah. And of course, like I find things and I'm like, oh, actually there's this, there's this, there's this. Let me write it down and everything. And I let the uh, Excel sheet be open on my computer without fair. saving it. Oh, um, not fair. <laughs> and then, you know, I did some work like, on my computer at a boba place on like Tuesday, I believe it was, or maybe Wednesday. I forget. I don't know. I blacked out mm. uh, because it's just also traumatizing. I go back home. I try to open up my computer to be like, let me actually do the taxes this time. And I get that little gray screen with the folder and the question mark. Ooh, that's the worst one. That's to get. the worst one. People to are get. always talking about like the rainbow wheel of death. And it's like, no, 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 no. The, the gray folder, the gray folder with the question mark. And Ooh. I was like, okay, well, this is how I go. And the thing is like, <laughs> <laughs> I my computer is nine and a half years old. Yes. Almost ten years old because I got it Christmas of 2012. So it's like this computer was on its way out. Absolutely. I mean, just editing those two game ads videos the past year have been really hard because the computer lagged a lot mm. because it was just like, baby, we are old as fuck. Stop <sighs> doing this to us. Yes. Um, but I was like, you know what? We can do it. We can do it. And then it finally was just like, you know what? We can't do it. Can't do so I took it to the computer place and they were like, oh, it could be this. It could be this. Blah, 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 blah. It could be like a hundred dollar thing mm. or it could be like a six hundred dollar thing. Oof. And so I was like, OK, if it's the six hundred dollar thing, it is time to just buy a new computer. For sure. Of course, it ended up being the six hundred dollar thing. 
thing. God. And so I was just like, you know what? I have to buy a new computer anyway. It's fine. I'm very glad that I backed up all my stuff like two weeks ago. Yes, good so for you. I'm just hoping that that like, wor- I'm just like scared that it's not going to work. You and backed it up. It's going to work. I know. I'm just like scared that if I try putting it back up on the new computer, it's not going to, I get scared. I get nervous. <laughs> um, and so, yeah, I've just been, so I can't do my taxes. I can't edit two gay Matt's videos. So guys, Matt Palmer has edited the last, like, because of various different reasons, not just my computer. Matt Palmer has edited the past, like, six Two Game Mats videos. <laughs> and so everyone give him a round of applause. You know what? I didn't even ask to be called out here, but I do appreciate it. And I will thank you all for the applause that I know you're giving at home and are in your cars or wherever you are listening to us Exactly. Because, right <laughs> you know, it is a lot of work. And, it is. And, you know, it's it's rough out there. It is. Um, But, yeah, so I, that's it, the entire week has just been me stressing about that. But, hey, you're not sick anymore. I'm not sick anymore. Oh, that's I feel great. And you're not sick anymore. I I'm not. I have like a little tiny lingering like congestion uh, moment, but it's like it's been a million years. And I'll just, we clearly had what the other one had. So yeah. I think we're both fine. Um, but yes, I am feeling much better. Uh, Jackson and I went to a wedding yesterday, which was very nice. I uh, hadn't been to a wedding since COVID of it all. Um, and this so, was your first wedding since COVID? It was. Yeah. Oh, wow. It was. And so it was on the west side. And so they, there was a very pretty church on Westwood where mm. the ceremony was held. And then the um, reception was at the beach, actually. It was like the Annenberg beach house or whatever and it was a very lovely time these were people that were closer friends of Jackson's and someone in his writing group uh, was getting married but it was still very fun also great fun to dance to all the great music and I'll always when I leave weddings I think you know what what would be on my wedding playlist? And like, mm. how much can I have control over that? Because it's like, sure, in theory, you want a DJ. You want someone who's going to like be like, you know, and now the groom's mom talks or whatever. And like, you know, is the master of ceremonies. But I don't want you making any decisions about what song plays or the order or like, oh, I will God. need you to follow exactly what I have prescribed. In for the you. order that, and yeah. I don't know if DJs would like that. You know, Uh, they can suck it. You're paying them. (laughs) It's true. But then it's like, should I just do it myself? I love that I'm really planning for a wedding that is not happening. (laughs) I am not (laughs) engaged. No one's getting married. But I just that whenever I leave a wedding, because I'm like, I think this worked well at this wedding. Mm -hmm. I think musically this and only about the music. This worked well. I missed a little bit of this. I would have done a little bit of that. So otherwise, the week was great. I don't think anything too crazy happened. I'm preparing. My mom is coming into town. She gets in on Wednesday. She is staying with us through the following Tuesday. And so um, I need to clean the apartment because, you know. Uh, yes. The mothers, <laughs> they will find that corner they that you find. have not touched. And they'll be like, what's this? <laughs> and, you know, I just want her to have a comfortable time. I We have a two-bedroom. And the whole thought was we want it to feel. I want people to feel comfortable staying here. And so yeah. this is a good. I'm trying to think if anyone even has slept over in that bedroom and I don't know if they have so okay. this is our first no 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 we had friends that came in town and slept over but my mom coming is a different thing oh. you know she wants I mean, to the, see you living your best life the queen I, is coming I mean we need to get the finest of linens I mean on the bed so that is all happening even though she doesn't get here till Wednesday it's already been in my mind and so after work tomorrow and then after work Tuesday what will I be doing I'll just be cleaning like a little Cinderella cinder fella yeah. just cleaning up you know yes, exactly oh, I miss like your mom coming I'm because she would always like cook and she'd be like, <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's what she missed. <laughs> and, and it would always be really good and there would always be like a little extra for me and I would eat it. And, and and it was always fun because you would always like be at work or whatever and she'd be in the living room and we would like chat and everything that's true. as you were working. Yeah, my mom likes to come and then like for a few days like go to a bunch of museums, do a lot of stuff. But mm. then by the next week, like she always stays through at least Monday and she's like, by the Monday... I'm done. You should go to work and I'll just be like hanging out. And I'm like, great. (laughs) That works for me. When my mom comes, she never wants to do any of like the LA visiting stuff. Cause like my family, they're not really like travelers or whatever. Uh Like, I can't say like I guess that's where I get it where it's like you go somewhere and it's like oh yeah I guess I can do this if you know, someone else has the idea or whatever but mm-hmm. like I go to a town and I don't necessarily have like a plan right um, so you know she my mom wants to come to LA to just like make me food oh. and, and like so I can have it like in the freezer it would like make me like pasta vizool or like big ziti or something like that or ancient right. hair with tuna fish sauce like all the Italian stuff that I don't get living in Los Angeles because I no longer live in New Jersey <laughs> Um, and so she, that's like all she ever wants to do. And so when my brother always comes with her, he's always just like, mom, we are not just going to sit around <laughs> Matthew's apartment and just like make shit. Like we are going to hey, do stuff. You got to do what you got. Hey, that doesn't sound like a bad time for anybody involved, the making shit, but yeah. you can do, you do a little bit, just a little bit of it here and there. It's probably all a mom needs. Yes. You know, they just want to see you. They just want to see, see you. you. Quality time. Yeah. It's going to be lovely. Yeah. So. 
That's what's happening. Should we dive into the news for idiots? Let's go in. Let's I, apparently, go in. there wasn't much. I mean, we ha- I have some things, and if you want to talk about them, we can. And if you're like, I don't care so much about that, we'll just edit it out. <laughs> okay, great. <laughs> well, the first thing, it's just, I like to start off with good news sometimes. Yes. You know, to quote Kamala, I just love good news. <laughs> <laughs> the confirmation of Katanji Brown Jackson to the Supreme Court. It's just such a beautiful thing. I loved seeing everyone reacting to it. I loved seeing those videos of her reacting to the votes mm. all coming in for her. The, also, there are super cuts of these like Republican people talking about like, oh, she's so amazing. She's so wonderful. Like, what a, like a, a exemplary American. I vote no. <laughs> it's like, I know that super cut. I saw that. Disgusting. disgusting. And just the fact that, uh, well, she was confirmed by 53 to 47. Yes. Um, and uh, it was Mitt Romney, uh, Susan Collins, and Lisa Murkowski, I believe her name is, mm. are the three Republican senators that uh, decided to vote with her, which of yes. course they should have. Right. Um, but the fact that after she was confirmed, like all those other Republicans left the room, like you are <laughs> children, just children. And it's like, but you know what? I don't even want to focus on the haters. No, I want to focus on this incredible woman who's done such incredible things, getting something that she is honestly overqualified for compared to those people who were just recently confirmed like the last few confirmations she like like don't ask me anything bitch like don't look at me <laughs> askance in any way when you have Brett Kavanaugh sitting right there and that what's that lady's name who's I forget uh Amy Coney Barrett Woo! No, just nothing. Just like let, just like read my resume and then vote yes. Thanks. So I'm glad that even though she really got put through the ringer and those Republicans acted like children when she was confirmed, it's just a beautiful thing to watch and see happen. Amazing. I I just yeah. was thrilled. And especially with like so much that's happening in the world today, it's mm. like very down and stressful and everything. This was just like a moment of just like ah yes, wonderful yes. things do happen. It's true. Yeah, it's very true. Um, and I just thought this was interesting since we were just recently talking about the Grammys. Did you know that Bruno Mars has not lost a single Grammy nomination since 2014? Huh. Every time he has been nominated since then, he has won. And in 2011, he was up for like a bunch of awards and lost them all, actually. Yeah. And in 2014, uh, Unorthodox Jukebox like lost all those Grammys when honestly, like, oh, that's an album. That is a great. I <laughs> that, think it's my favorite Bruno album. Oh, my God. Still. Yes, absolutely. Thrilling. Um, so wow, I mean, good for him. Yes, the good Grammys for him. like him, and it's like. So does that mean that Silk Sonic's gonna win Album of the Year next they year? Very well. I mean, you get you saw how they gave it uh, "Leave the Door Open" Song yeah. of the Year and Record of the Year. Like, you but then you're gonna like have Silk album. Sonic next to Adele Thirty, Adele and 30. maybe I mean, I assume some other things will come out between now and the end of you know the Grammys eligibility period. Yeah, I'm trying but to think like who else is gonna release something. Is Beyonce releasing something? I, I mean, I feel like there's such a large threat of artists releasing. Like, I feel like I've heard so many rumors about Taylor releasing an EP of collaborations, and I'm like, all right, whatever. Please don't do it this week. Like, cause I, I'm not going to like interrupt my mom visiting, you know, the Getty Villa or whatever to come listen to, you know, seven duets of Taylor Swift with Matt Steele. I'm really not. So we'll talk if it happens this week, if anything happens later this week, we'll talk about it in the podcast next week. We interrupted uh, my mom visiting for Lemonade. That's true. But we, my we mom watched it with your mom. My, my mom sat and watched it with us. Yes. And my mom, the whole time she was just like, I can't believe she did all of this just to get back at her husband for like, Gina. And it's like. Of course, I can did. believe it. Of co- I'm oh, happy what a did. moment! <laughs> I was so uh, hoping that it was just a divorce announcement album, and I know I say that every time Lemonade comes up, but I was. I know. Bless my mom for sitting there watching us both have heart attacks on the couch, Truly. and my mom was just watching us, just like I don't really understand what's <laughs> happening, but okay. <laughs> I mean, maybe it was fun for her. I oh hope. My God. I'm sure she had a blast because she got to so. watch her son get excited about hey. something. Um, yeah, I. I mean, hey, if Beyonce releases something, that's going to be a, a heavy Grammy year. I mean, yeah, I, I believe she'll release something before the eligible, eligibility period is over. Yeah. I do. And I mean, next year's Oscars are going to be really big, like as well with like mm. big time directors like Scorsese, Spielberg, Damien Chazelle's releasing like a three and a half hour oh, movie. And I'm so excited for it. I so. cannot believe you would read a headline that is Damien Chazelle is has a three hour movie, time, like a period piece coming out and like you're over the moon. Oh my is God. Is there anything that I would want less than that? Uh, like <laughs> uh, nothing makes me happier than read than reading that running time for Ooh. that new I mean, that running time might go down a little bit. Obviously. Hopefully, my God. No, I want it. Yeah. I want lives. all of it. I want all of it. He's my king. <laughs> I, I hope you get let go of that at some point. Um, I just have to say, did you see the joke that got cut from the Oscars that Amy Schumer was going to make? Yeah, I, I do wonder. Well, I guess tell it first. Okay. And then I'll have my question. So she said um, that she there was a joke 
uh, that she wasn't allowed to say at the Oscars. That was Don't Look Up is the name of a movie. More like Don't Look Down the Barrel of Alec Baldwin's Shotgun. I wasn't allowed to say any of that, but you can just come up on stage. Well, I can't speak about the rest of that because we've made an embargo. Yeah. <laughs> she said some other stuff. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm like, okay, A, I don't know that that's a joke. <laughs> like, is that, like, is the joke just don't, like, I don't understand what the joke is. Not quite, yes. Yes. Um, <laughs> I, I wonder what the context was for her making this announcement. Was it really, like, a joke that she um, thought of for the Oscars, or was she joking that this was a joke I that she thought it, of for I the mean, Oscars? The, I mean, I, if she's going to come out and say, oh, guys, by the way, which if you didn't think the thing about Kirsten Dunst, like getting being a seat filler or whatever at, during the Oscar ceremony was a joke, you're an idiot. But oh the God. fact that she came out and clarified that, there's been no clarification for this, that like this is a joke about a joke that I could have made. That's true. You yeah. know? Yeah. 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 First of all, the, the fact that people were upset about that Kirsten Dunst, it's Insane. like, guys, you need to go outside. <laughs> And, like, understand what, like, humor and acting and bits are. Right. Like, th there was nothing offensive about what right. she did. That with, wasn't yeah. real. Yes. But um, this is offensive this, because this is someone a, yeah. died. And, like, I don't understand how that's a joke, A. I don't understand, like, I, Alec Baldwin would be upset. The family of the woman who passed away would be upset. Like, why, mm. A, would you make this joke in private? Have the Oscars smartly tell you, hey, don't fucking say that. And I think, like, people on her team were like, hey, don't fucking say that. And then still go out of your way to say it. <laughs> that's That's the... Like one of the questions I have, if this was genuinely a joke that she like tried to think of like in the uh, brainstorming for the Oscars and everything, it's like you, I'm sure like when you're in brainstorming coming up with things, right. you like spout out ideas totally. and then you're like, oh, actually, no. and I don't fault her and, for that. And so, but then the fact that you then thought up, oh, you know what example I'm going to bring right. up of a joke that didn't make it, like the fact that. Yeah, it's a bad move if, yeah. Because the whole thing is like, uh, when the, uh, besides what else happened, besides what else happened, all I left that show thinking was like, wow, those three did a great job. Oh, they were wonderful. They were funny yeah. and they were, you know, effervescent. I wanted to see more of them. Especially her, like she was the one that came on right after it all happened yes. and everything and she handled it so well. Absolutely. Yeah. So like, I just, I... I like liking her and like I like think wanting good things for her and thinking positive thoughts of her. So when stuff like this happens, it's like, Amy, please. I mean, you know, that the you know <laughs> <laughs> like comedians stick their foots in their mouths all the time. So All right. Last thing we'll talk about it because again we said there's an embargo. Ten years is a long time. Okay. <laughs> Next up. Did you see okay, I'm no chef. I am not someone who you know, I can make a few things, I can follow a few recipes, a recipe tells me to do something. Uh, I'll do it. But I was shocked to see the outrage at Paula Patton this week when she put on TikTok her uh, mom's fried chicken recipe, which I guess people felt was not right. <laughs> <laughs> and I think the big thing that came up, I think someone reposted the TikTok. It, but I think it was actually an Olympian who like was commenting on the TikTok and reacting to it and saying that she was just seasoning the grease and not the chicken before putting in the grease. Mm -hmm. Again, I don't know how to cook anything. I've never fried chicken, so I can't speak to this really. Okay. But that does seem odd. <laughs> but what really seemed odd to me as a first time viewer is when she cut into the chicken and it was pink. Okay. I w turned on this, uh, what's it called, TikTok, because it was on like Twitter or something like that. And at first I was kind of just like, oh, another joke about how white people don't season their food, blah, sure. blah, 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 blah. Um, but then she like washed the chicken with water and everything. And then that sparked a debate of like, how do you wash chicken? Do right. you wash chicken? Right. I've seen both all the options and I'm like, okay, whatever floats your boat. <laughs> but then I was like, okay, let's see how she like seasons the chicken. So when she put that chicken... <laughs> Just in the bag of just flour. Mm. See, I was kind of like, oh, it's going to be, you know, I've seen this it joke a million lot, times. Yeah. and everything. It will be like very little seasoning like and everything. But the fact that it was just flour, I was like, <laughs> I was like, huh. That's when you paused. Like, I was like, hmm. that's, that's when I, I really paused as well. And I was like, okay, this is interesting. Interesting. Um, and then... And then she like started seasoning the chicken while it was frying in the pan in the grease and yeah. everything. And so it's kind of like, okay, yes. Um, I've never seen that done before, but I do wonder, has someone tried it since seeing this TikTok? Has someone tried it? Tried the version with the pink chicken? No, or like <laughs> I tried. Well, okay, with the pink chicken, I kind of. 
I didn't know whether to give that a pass or not just because it's like, okay, it's a blurry TikTok video. Maybe the the coloring is off in the quality of the video. I so. don't know. That was the, I mean, again, so, I don't fry chicken. That was the most worrying part. <laughs> the color so, of that chicken was not one that I would it serve. It did, but I didn't know if the lighting in the room, like you have pink curtains. Oh. So maybe like if I, like I open chicken now, maybe it would look a little pinker That's than it is in real kind. life. So I was, I was giving the benefit of the doubt That's for very that kind. moment. Uh, it was basically the, the bag of flour that I was just like, <laughs> <laughs> huh. But yeah, I do wonder if like someone has like, you know what? I'm going to give this recipe a chance. Someone must. I feel like if no, for no other reason than TikTok views, someone's got to try the Try to see how it works with pouring the seasoning directly on it, which to me sounds really aggressive. Yeah. Like you were just pouring all that seasoning just um, on it. wild. And I, I guess, you know, some of it falls off in the grease and everything, but... Is I, it I just, I, we'll see how it goes. I will yeah. say, I enjoyed how happy she was delivering oh my the God, message. Girl, She's cook a your ray chicken. of sunshine. And I liked, she had a little response that was like, you know, I hear you. And like that's, <laughs> she was very like kind elementary school teacher. And she was yes. just like, you know, I hear you. I will try other recipes, but you know, this is my mom's. And this we're all, we're going to keep doing it this way. And you know, you can't deny what your family does is right. what tastes best to you. And I like, feel that's like. just how your taste buds work. It's like what my grandmother did to the food is what that's what's to right me. to me. And yes. I also appreciate that she has a level of fame and a level of wealth and a level of confidence in herself that she's like, yeah, everyone on the internet's mad at me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and she's not losing a wink of sleep. I feel like so many celebrities get so up in arms when, you know, Twitter or TikTok or Instagram is coming for them for reasons that aren't legitimate or like not like you're a problematic racist or something. Yeah. Where it, it's like, of course, Paula's like, well, I hear you. And like, see ya. <laughs> I, I'm <laughs> sure know? she's Adorable. very, I'm sure she's very much just like, oh, if this is the thing they're the most mad at me about. Then Truly. I am good to go. I ladies know. And, gentlemen. Yeah. and I bet she'd love to be Googled for things that weren't like. Wait, Robin Thicke wrote a whole album about you? Because <laughs> that was so weird. So I, I, I thought it was strange for sure, but I still have like in my heart for her. Yeah, you know? I. You've never fried chicken. I've never like. I don't. No. I don't cook meat. Like yeah. I eat meat, but like I always sort of like. I don't. I try not to eat that much of it. Mm. So I always like save it for like when I go out to eat or something, right. or when I have like a free meal at the restaurant or whatever. Like, cause right. I hate cooking more than anything. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what I would do if I tried to make fried chicken. I've never my, tried because I'm. I my thought with cooking is like, okay, if I'm gonna cook it, I want it. To be vaguely healthy. And so uh -huh. I just do a grilled chicken moment. You know, I've done a lot of grilled chicken yes, in my you, day. Yes, you grill that chicken every <laughs> and, day. And I do, I season the chicken before I grill it. Of so course. And yes. I don't put it on the grill directly. <laughs> I put it on the chicken. <laughs> that is what I would do as well. You know, that's just a choice um, I made. Yeah, I mean, I do know my grandmother on my dad's side is from the South, actually. Mm. And she made great fried chicken. And I, mm. I don't know what she used as the seasonings, but I know that what she did was um, do like half whatever oil you're going to use and like... A, the couple scoops of bacon grease. Oh. Like that was her thing. That's All right. what made it good. So maybe if you ever fried chicken, try that. Um, but don't just put it in a bag of flour, please. I promise not to. Okay. I promise not to. Um, some two, some new engagements of celebrities. Mm -hmm. Avril Lavigne is engaged to Mod Son, who I believe they began dating like as she was recording this new album. So it's like it hasn't been that long. But you know, if you know, you know, for some people. So congrats to them. You know, it's 2002 again, so Jennifer uh, Lopez and Ben Affleck are engaged again. Guys, they did it. They did it. They did it. Uh, They're going to do it. The They're only actually going to do it. The only interesting thing about this is that this all started from Southern Charm when a cast member, Madison, was called out on a reunion for FaceTiming with A-Rod while he was still in a relationship with Jennifer Lopez. And then J-Lo, rumor has it that J-Lo heard about this, dumped him, and then got with So it's like, I love that Madison LaCroix <laughs> really started the whole resurgence of Benefer. Really gave the millennials the dream they wanted. Absolutely. 20 years ago. I love it's like millennials that are our age, which is specifically not us. Because like, we could not care less I, about this. Yeah, <laughs> I was always like, I hope they're happy. Yeah. I'm glad they're having a good time. But For when sure. they broke up, I wasn't broken hearted. The only like celebrity breakup I was devastated over, I think, was John and Kate Plus I knew eight. you were going to say that. I <laughs> don't know if there's ever been a celebrity breakup, uh, like romantic breakup. Let me think. That I really... Yeah, mine are more about. mine are more pop groups. Like when Destiny's Child broke up. Oh, when, I the, was, when Jerry left. <laughs> when Jerry uh, left. Oh, that. But was like romantic. Just... I guess I've never like been. Su I've never been like a super shipper kind no, of person. I've like, never cared. I'm just like, oh, what's the lady in the relationship doing? <laughs> Yeah, like, exactly. That's my thought. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, that's happening there. Nancy Myers is teaming up with Netflix for a new movie. Good for her. Good Let's for her. see those kitchens, girl. Exactly. Let's see how, how the fried chicken is uh, cooked in the Nancy Myers kitchen. 
I'm excited for that because I guess she has not made a movie since 2015. I think it was The Intern was her last film. Oh, was that her last I film? Think it was her last okay, film. I hear that's actually a very good film. Really? Yeah, I hear it's very good. I mean, I've she's never seen it. an icon. So, yeah. uh, Carly Rae Jepsen is returning to music, dropping bombs, like dropping like little clues, like a map. Uh, there's a map here, absolutely. Like it's X the Goonies marks the spot. here. <laughs> it's very Goonies, California across my mind, and the picture is very like. Wild West, very I, Power of the Dog. <laughs> it's it is it is Jane Campion is Carly Rae Jepsen. Absolutely, and I'm like, okay, it, the imagery is very much like a. Is this going to be a Joanne moment? Which we're all worried about. I, I, I love how like every new artist now it's like, okay, when is their Joanne era going like, to be? We don't need one. Because didn't Kylie have one? She had a country record before disco. Did she? She did. <laughs> and I think it actually has some lovely parts about it. And I think it might be dealing with like her recovery from cancer or whatever. But like sonically, I don't know if that's what people wanted. And sonically, you know, we you can't judge a book by its cover. Maybe yes. she's going to give us Carly as we've always known her. Mm. And there's nothing to worry about. But the image does... You know, strike some fear. In it's it. some earth toniness. It is. It's, which it's, is nice. I would look good in that picture as a redhead myself. You would look great. Um, and she has her red lips for as her color of, pop, of course, which we appreciate. Yeah. But I just, I, I just think she's found a great niche for herself. Like, mm. and I wouldn't want her to, you know, go completely off from well, that. Well, you know, you can't put her in a box. She's an artist. She's, she's got to expand and everything. The, we, the only hope we have is that if there is a big expansion, that it's worth the expansion. That mm. it, the music is worth. The expansion. That's the request. That so, is the request. All right, Carly, let's go. All right, let's see. Is there anything else, Giant? Um, do you want to talk about this? I think I saw it on oh, your Twitter. Okay, I Marcel the Shell. There's a new Marcel the Shell with shoes on trailer. An A24 film is coming. Uh, this is a produced version of it. Is it a book that Jenny Slate wrote with her former husband? Did I make that up? Marcel the Shell? Yeah. Do you not know Marcel the Shell? I don't know Marcel, Marcel the Shell. Marcel the Shell was a viral video. I think it was like two videos, okay. episodes that came out. And it was in like 2010, I want to say. Okay. And they just went super viral. And it's just this little adorable, lighthearted shell with just one eye, just talking about his life. And it's just the cutest thing wow. on the planet. And 10 years later, over 10 years later, A24 is like, you know what the people in their late <laughs> 20s, early 30s are going to buy a ticket to? This fucking viral video from 12 years ago. I feel and it's like, like they're not wrong. Yes, yes. <laughs> A24, you are doing it all right. And wow. we will talk about that later. Oh. <laughs> um, but I am so excited for Marcel the Shell. The wow. movie looks so adorable. The animation looks so cute. I am so excited. You need wow. to watch those little Marcel videos. Okay. They are I just know. so darling and precious. Wow. I mean, I, Jackson's a fan, but I've uh. never or, you know, dove, dove into the shell, I guess. I just don't know. Dive in. It's I gotta a dive into the shell. shell. All right. Excited for that. Uh, Dancing with the Stars is moving to Disney Plus, which I just think is weird because it's like, I didn't know Disney Plus could do live event shows like that. Yeah. And is this the start of something? Is that going to be a thing that's going to happen? Is these, you know... TV stations that have streamers are going to start putting things on the streamers. Well, I guess CBS did it the with... The Tony uh, Awards did it. Oh, yeah, that's true. Yeah. I forgot. And also with that one season of Big Brother, right? With Over the Top? Oh, that was such a great season of television. <laughs> but that wasn't Paramount Plus. That was just... Yeah, but it was on the CBS. CBS All Access. All Access. Yeah, mm. but, oh, that would talk about a great era of time. Oh, that was... Well, not a great era of time in the world because that was when the person was elected mm. but uh, a great season of television right that so few people saw hey mm. i'm glad you're one of the people yes uh did you see that jojo siwa has a cut her hair which looks great she looks great looks great and then wasn't invited to the kids choice awards why why do you think uh, that's the thing it's like why do you have to rile me up <laughs> like i could totally just let nickelodeon and jojo siwa be in their lanes and like wish them the best from afar but now i have to get invested like Bitch, why did you not invite JoJo Siwa to the awards just because she's a gay lady and she has a girlfriend now? Yeah, like you're that's bullshit. You're Nickelodeon. Like the kids' program is all about diversity and, now. Like it's like yes, yes, yes. Let's go put and, every type of person on here. And, and the kids are obsessed with this girl. Like, yes, and have been obsessed with her for years. What are you doing? Are they you, will watch. You're shooting yourself in the foot with this because Nickelodeon. It's not like you're like the number one. Ch children's entertainment right. programming these days. And my memory of Nickelodeon was like Ren and Simphy like barfing on each other. Like I you're know. not like, oh, we need to watch the kids and what they see. Like uh, it just is like, okay, uh, I'm going to keep an eye on this. 
But Team Jojo Siwa. And she was on Dancing with the Stars, too, so there's a tie in there. Full circle, guys. Lastly, I just want to say, I haven't even watched it yet, but Sonic the Hedgehog got a huge opening weekend, <laughs> and I am so excited. The last movie I saw before the pandemic was Sonic. We, I want to see Sonic 2 as soon as possible. I actually sent Jackson a list of movies I wanted to see, uh, which includes a movie that I think is coming up next for you, or okay. coming up soon for you. And Sonic 2 was also, of course, on it. So I'm just thrilled. I love that. Sonic is still a thing for the kids and all the people in the world. Sonic has given me so much joy over my 29 years. Uh -huh. <laughs> and, <laughs> and I have nothing but bad things, uh, or nothing but good things to say about Sonic, Tails, and the whole gang. And also, um, for the actors, James Marsden is in it, um, as is, oh gosh, who plays Kelly on Insecure? I know you don't watch it. Uh, Natasha Rothwell, she is also in it. And everyone involved in the Sonic 2 production, congratulations on your big opening weekend. We love you. We love we, you. We support you, Sonic. <laughs> we support you, Sega. Does Sega exist still? I think Nintendo ate Sega, I think. Okay. Yeah, I just so. remember Sega. Oh, classic. That's the only... Speaking I had a Game Gear. My brother had Game Gear. Oh, yeah. Uh, when he was little. That's the only experience with video games, besides Duck Hunt, of course. Classic. Um, we are really aging ourselves. <laughs> Time to turn remember, off 29, the 29, 29. 29, 29. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, well, is there any other news for idiots that I might have missed? I don't believe so. All right, well, we'll take a quick break, and then we'll be back with more Two Game Mats, the podcast. All right, guys, we're back. We are in our seats. Yes. We are, we are burning up. It's true. To quote the Madonna song from 1983. Great Madonna song. Yeah, that's why you need to listen to all of Mar Madonna's discography. I'll see what I can do, okay? I'm telling you, it's 5,000 albums, and it is a roller coaster <laughs> ride. You are being flipped in every direction. Seems like a lot. All right, let me... Switch my new phone on. Yes. And we are on to email my heart. This is the section of the podcast where we answer any questions that you guys might have. You can be a part of email my heart if you email us at two gay mats at gmail.com to spell T W O. Yes. Um, or you could comment on this YouTube video if you are watching this podcast on YouTube, which, like, why wouldn't you? Because we just look so adorable. It's, you just want to see our faces. It's true. Um, so I just want to say we got a question from Helen like two weeks ago about your Eurovision. She's one of our Eurovision stands Love asking it. us about our thoughts on the new songs for Eurovision. I think we are going to answer that when we're closer to Eurovision in May. Okay. Don't think we're ignoring you, Helen. We would never ignore Helen. The Eurovision stands are always like, Eurovision. They're always, Eurovision. yeah, they're and, always on us. And we're <laughs> always like, yeah, we will, we will. And then we're always like, oops, <laughs> it went by and we forgot. It's true. Um, but don't worry, Helen. We will try. Um, also, thank you to Mark for giving us our uh, Twitch suggestions. Yes, to help it was us super with helpful. I told you directly on the Twitch stream, but honestly, it was very helpful just to hear that I'm not doing everything wrong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I would be doing everything wrong if I was the one in charge. So thank you to Matt Palmer and to Mark. Um, so the actual first question comes to us from Durga. Durga says, I've been living under a rock. Well, hello again. Gosh, those Oscars were absolutely crazy. Anyway, just wanted to thank you for your Taylor Swift adjacent musician recommendations. While I was already familiar with Olivia Rodrigo and Conan Gray, both excellent, and I heard they registered for some sort of collab, I emoji, Joni Mitchell was a wonderful new suggestion. Uh, I was also writing to confirm that, yes, I have been living under a rock because Beyonce raps? She's got bars. I stumbled upon her song Formation while looking for new hip-hop style rap tracks to add to my playlist and was completely surprised, but in a great way, of course. Do either of you listen to rap music? And if so, whose music do you like? Some of my favorites include Up by Cardi B, oh, Coco Chanel by Nicki Minaj, Best Friend and TKO, Black Friday Remix featuring several artists, Judging from your Every Lady Has a Limit episode, I'm guessing Eminem is not going to feature on the list Matt Palmer, but rightfully nope. so. Just to clarify, I thought all her songs were like, hey, just to clarify, I thought all of Beyonce's songs were like Halo or Single Ladies, but I've been listening and realizing I was dead wrong. LOL. Hugs, Durga. Durga. I love that you just discovered Formation, but I do need you to do a Beyonce deep dive as soon as possible because yes. that discography, you're going to find so many gems that are going to change your life. It's going to be amazing. Um, I have always been someone who loves a good melody, so I definitely am more drawn to pop music, R&B music before I am hip hop. But I will say, especially with the abundance of female rap artists out these days, mm. I am definitely more interested in them. Like you mentioned, Cardi B, I think, is the uh, female hip hop artist I know the best at this point. I was very into Nicki Minaj when she first came out as well. 
Uh, stupid. You remember Stupid Ho? I was. I had a oh, big I mean, Stupid Ho phase. Piece of music. Those first two albums, I like know very well. But uh, that last Cardi album, Invasion of Privacy, I was on. There's just so many great songs on that record. Like I love Money Bag so much. Bodak Yellow, of course. Uh, I like it. The singles, but like even. Uh, even beyond that, like I need to look up. There's one more song that I need to be mentioning about how good it is. But that album, I think, is the hip hop album I've listened to the most, probably besides the Miseducation of Lauryn Hill, mm. who does you know a rap sing thing. A, a um, rap sing thing is like. Not. I mean, it's, it's <laughs> truly a classic piece of music, album of the year for a reason. Um, but I, uh, d- you know, I don't know that there are any male. I like Nas's one mic. That's a very specific. <laughs> male hip-hop artist that I really love, but I do love that song. I also love If I Rule the World by Nas with Lauryn Hill on the chorus. So there's a little bit I dabble, but I'm more of a, a melody person. Okay, yeah. yeah. I, we often get like suggestions of like, oh, react to this rap artist or and everything, but we're both kind of like, ah, neither of us knows enough right. about rap as like an art form. So like we can listen to a rap song and be like, oh, I really enjoyed that and everything, but we don't have as extensive of a knowledge For sure. as you do with, you know, a lot of pop music and I do with musical theater obviously. So um, I will, but like, obviously I can see people like Kendrick Lamar who who always, when he performs at any award show, he is always the The best best. performer. He is brilliant and amazing. And I love everything I've seen him do. And I've listened to, uh, to Pimpa Butterfly and Damn in full. Right. And as someone who doesn't know anything about rap, I'm just like, this is great. (laughs) Um, (laughs) uh, but yeah, I, that's, I don't know much about rap music beyond like the music man, Harold Hill, Rock Island. <laughs> okay. <You know? laughs> like I will never forget making Matt Palmer listening Oof. to the music man. Hurt me. And when he and when Rock Island opened the show, he texted me, he's like, Are you fucking kidding me? And I'm like, Yes, it's the most brilliant thing. It on was the upsetting. Planet. It was upsetting. Oh, uh, it's brilliant and perfect. If anyone wants to know the Cardi B song I was thinking of and couldn't think of, it is Bickenhead. Classic piece of music. Track three. I love Invasion of Privacy. That is just a fun fucking record but okay. sorry and then, and then of course there are like the the things we love where it's like a pop or like R&B lady with like I a, mean, a rap feature clearly I mean Mariah as, started as it all she did she started gentlemen. the rap song collaboration should just be called the Mariah Carey Award at the Grammys let's be serious that I mean that would Hello? be a way to honor the award and to honor Mariah Carey which the Grammys don't do enough <sighs> it's like He's preaching the choir. He's really <laughs> preaching the choir, which the, I appreciate. What you have taught me in these ten, hey. in this decade of knowing me. Yes, you're welcome. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. Thank you so much, Matt Palmer. Uh, so the next question comes to us from YouTube. Mm. Uh, it says, hello, Matt. Destiny here. I thought I'd drop a question right here on YouTube. I'm a fairly new listener, so I'd love a bit of an intro about both of you, where you're both from, what do you do for work? Matt Palmer, are you a full-time musician? Also, Matt Palmer, I've listened to two episodes so far, uh, but already know you're the biggest Real Housewives stan. LOL. What season would you recommend for a beginner? The same question for Big Brother for you, Matt Steele. <laughs> um, I, I think this is very interesting because I, I think we always forget like, oh, we there are times where we get like so many new subscribers right. and they might not know anything about the, us. Anything about us. Or True. We're two friends. For all we, they know, like they were like dating or something. <laughs> right. Um, I'm sure a lot of people assume that when well, they first watch us, which is not true. Not true. Um, we live in separate homes, ladies and gentlemen. It's true. Um, but I guess, should we like reintroduce ourselves? Yeah, for make the it new, quick. <laughs> make it quick. My name's Matt Steele. Um, I was born June 19th. Nope. Some year in the 1900s. <laughs> um, and I'm from just outside of Trenton, New Jersey. Um, I majored in musical theater and that's my background, musical theater, musical theater and movies. Um, and uh, now I live in Los Angeles. Yes. Wrote a film called Devo's Brilliant. It's on uh, iTunes for you to buy. Right now. Right now. Or right now. or Amazon. Amazon. Or wherever you rent or buy movies. Thank yes. you so much for that little tidbit. My name is Matt Palmer. I uh, grew up in Atlanta, Georgia. Went to NYU for recorded music. Um, I went to NYU too. Absolutely. Not for recorded music. No. And then I moved to LA. I am a songwriter and singer. I am not full time, uh, but I do love it. And I have a new single called Chemistry, which is out and available now. Um, and I uh, also, my day job is in uh, software. It's like a royalties management software. So... Do all that, and then we do the podcast, we do the YouTube videos, and... Um, yeah, we've been doing it for almost 10 years. It'll be 10 true. years next Wait, April. Wait, didn't Durga have years. another question for us that we, in the middle of that email? Let's... 
Recheck. Go back to Let's, it because I feel like there was uh, in the middle of it there was something before like what, okay. what are you about? Well, first say I guess which oh, real God, housewives. I have to edit this. Oh, <laughs> yes, which real housewives? Um, I always tell people to either if you are fine jumping in the middle of something, start with season three of Real Housewives of New York. If you'd rather start from the very beginning, I would recommend you start either uh, Salt Lake City because there are only two seasons, or start with the beginning of Beverly Hills because the first several seasons of Beverly Hills are very good. And then once you get to season five, after the end of season five. Turn it off. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, as far as Big Brother goes, I think I've said this before, but like if you are just starting, I think season 10 is the best season to start with just because it has incredible gameplay, an amazing cast of characters who are just all ridiculous and hilarious and just drama filled and feisty. Um, but, and it was over, it was 2008, so it was quite a while ago, but it, still feels like a similar format to what Big Brother is now. Mm. Whereas my personal favorite season is season six, but that was even longer ago. So I, I feel like starting with season 10 is a nice solid way to go. And then try season six. I love that. Um, Durga did not ask another question. Great. It does not seem. Perfect. But yeah, thank you for that question because yes. a lot of people, I guess, don't know because they're new subscribers. They haven't been listening to us and watching us for the right. past nine years. <laughs> so welcome. So welcome. And I hope you're enjoying us so far. Yeah. Um, so wait, is it time? I believe it's time. So Matt Steele, I have a question for you. Uh -huh. What's been giving you moments, darling? I mean, everyone knew it was coming because we I really already did. told everyone it would be my giving <laughs> you moments, but everything, everywhere, all at once. Holy fucking shit. Wow. Like, it is just... Uh, like a bulldozer of a movie that is thrilling. It is funny. It is devastating. It is happy. It is heartwarming. It is just so, it is everything a movie could be. Not even that you could want in a movie, but it's like everything a movie could be. Jeez. It is, um, oh God, how do I describe the plot? <laughs> okay. It is about a woman played by Michelle Yao and her husband played by uh, Ki Hoi Kwan and their daughter, who's played by Stephanie Sue, mm. and uh, they the family runs a laundromat. They live above a laundromat, and like their lives are in shambles. They're about to get edited by the IRS. Uh, father's visiting Michelle Yao's uh, father's visiting from China, and mm -hmm. he's you know very old and like grumpy and not approving of many things <laughs> happening in their lives. Okay. Um, the couple is. The um, her husband is about to like give her divorce papers. Sure. Their daughter is a lesbian, and they don't like really approve. It's not that they don't approve of it, but they don't want to sort of like acknowledge it really. Got it. Because um, they don't know how to. So like everything is going wrong, and then suddenly, um, it is discovered that there is something wrong going on in a multiverse, many many dimensions away. I knew it was multiverse. If you're not aware of the multiverse, it is ridiculous, and the fact that. I, I do not believe in it at all, but like <laughs> some people do, but like, okay, believe what you want. But um, basically like ev if you don't know what it is, it's like every decision you make creates a separate, like there, if there are two different choices, mm. the d dimensions get like split off into two depending on what you choose. And so it just, there are just billions and billions of multiple universes around you that you just are not aware of. And, and so we're, are we visiting all of the different multiverses throughout the film? Yes. Wow. And so it's basically like, her husband from a different multiverse visits her and is like something horrible is happening in our multiverse and you are the Evelyn her name is Evelyn Michelle Yao like and you are the Evelyn of all the Evelyns in all the multiverses that can save us because you are the most boring one <laughs> <laughs> and and so Harsh. so therefore you are like the person who has the most I guess potential or like doesn't have any bad traits or whatever that will sway you in any sort of way so you can learn all of these things to help defeat the enemy of our multiverse and the I won't go into like who the enemy is but and so it's basically just her hopping around all these different multiverses and her from all these different multiverses like her channeling all these hers in all these multiverses <laughs> to battle this like evil force or not even wow. evil force I will say it is just a sad force that is damaging to the multiverses uh, and it's it is so insane. It's directed by uh, Dan Kwan and Daniel Scheinhardt. And I believe they did Swiss Army Man, which is a movie that came out, oh, I forget what year, maybe 2018, 2017, okay. around there. Um, that is a huge like cult classic that I've never seen before. And now I'm like, oh, I need to watch this movie. Um, it is so bonkers. It is hilarious. I mean, just everything that random that could possibly happen in a movie 
is happening. Like wow. there are choices that are made that you would never expect to happen in a million. It's like, you can't put that in a movie. Oh, these two filmmakers just did. And Shit. it is so much fun. Michelle Yao's performance is so great. Stephanie Sue is so great. Ki Hoi Kwan just gives such a beautiful performance. It's his first performance, I think, in 20 years. Oh my gosh. He's the, speaking of Goonies, he's the little, he's uh, Data in Goonies. Wow. Like, and so the fact that I'm seeing him on my screen again is just so heartwarming. What's he been up to for 20 years? Well, is- I don't know. Wow. Um, and it's just so wonderful, like, seeing these, like, regular, uh, like, people doing all these crazy, like, action sequences and everything. And apparently they did, like, a lot of their own stunts. Shit. Like, the, everything is great. The performances, the the script, it's it's just so moving. The it's so interesting because I'm surprised that A24 released it this early in the year because right. this could really be an Oscar contender for Damn. later on. Like I hope the buzz really really lasts. It's getting amazing amazing reviews. I mean, if anything, like. It, I mean, I would love it if it won or was nominated for like picture, director, screenplay, actor, actress, supporting actor, Damn. actress, whatever, like all of that and everything. But I really think it could be a force to win best editing specifically mm. because the way it's put together is just it's so much without I, I was afraid that I would be overwhelmed and I would not understand what is happening. And right. I, would, I would just be too stimulating. And it is very stimulating, but like I was never overwhelmed and I was in it the whole time. It's it's so much fun. I cannot recommend it enough. Oh my gosh. Everyone see it. Everyone see it. Everyone see it. Wow. It is so much fun. All right. Well, it's on my list. That's the thing is I've just been hearing so many rave reviews. Like I feel like everyone has posted on their Instagram story about how amazing this movie is. And I'm like, I don't want to be the last person to see it. Don't I feel like person. the whole world is going to see it before me and I don't want that. And I'm really hoping that A24 realizes like how many like and the the fact that um the, if it was released later, like Michelle Yao would have such an easier chance to, to get in for like a Best Actress nomination. And right. an Asian woman has not been nominated for Best Actress since like 1935 or something like that. And it was I forget her name. It was like Meryl something. But she and she was since 1935. Yeah. And it's, and she, I believe, Horrifying. was a, a half Indian woman who never revealed until her death that she was Asian. Jeez. So, like, this would be an amazing nomination. Totally. To get. I'm so rooting for her. And so I, I hope that A24, like, once Oscar season rolls around... It'll come sooner than you think, ladies and gentlemen. Oh, the year goes by I fast. I can't do that. <laughs> I can't <laughs> I, talk about it again. I'm hoping that A24 like gives it a re-release and like, yeah. an extra push and everything because people are really rooting for this movie. And it would be something cool to see nominated for Best Picture and everything because you, know, you, you want to see something that is super successful. Or a lot of people are complaining that... Um, you're not seeing stuff that's super successful at the box office get nominated for Oscar, which is not true. Like freaking Dune was nominated this year, but whatever. <laughs> but you know, people are having that complaint, you know, and so it'd be wonderful to see that. Like it'd be such a unique nomination. I would love to see it. Mm. All right. Yeah. Let's so I go. guess we'll stay tuned in. Hopefully, you know, they do a re-release or something or, you know, the promotion does not die down. The buzz does not die down before this time next year because we need it. We need it. We need it. Um, for me, I just have a couple of little things that have been giving me moments. If you have not uh, watched our YouTube review or reaction to it, the new Chloe single, Treat Me, is mm. so excellent. I am just so excited for her as a young artist. I am so excited for her solo adventure. I don't... I just... Like I said in the video, I don't anticipate not liking something she puts out. Something about like the way that she works her melodies, the song she chooses, the just the amount of energy and like unabashedness. I love that she's not trying to be cool. She's just like I well, I mean she's just like I'm really sexy and I love up tempo pop songs that like have a hip hop influence and like have throwback elements like you're just going to love it and every I'm just on the ride with her I'm Mm. so excited for her I just can't wait to see what she does next I also just want to shout out a song by Charlie Puth that came out this week I feel like I can't believe I'm talking about two Charlie Puth singles from the same album but his new single That's Hilarious which he uh, had been previewing on TikTok for a while I it is also too short much like Treat Me but it it's so singable. It is so catchy. I can't stop listening to it. I feel like having those two songs released at the same time was really exciting for me because up until this point in the year, I don't know that there's been a lot of pop music that's really gotten me, you know, through the roof or anything. Okay. But now that we have the Big Energy remix with Mariah, we have that new Chloe song and that new Charlie Puth song, which I think I like better than Light Switch. That's hilarious. Okay. It's just like... Light Switch is great, too. Light Switch is great. And this is like a weird concept. Not a weird concept, but just like kind of a, a bitchy concept for a straight man to have. It's okay. very much like... Oh, you, 
didn't want me before, but I was in like, you ruined a year of my life, but you want me back? You're delirious. That's hilarious. I love that. That's such a Mariah moment. <laughs> it is. It's very that. And I so I, I am into it. How and, do we um, get Mariah featured on this song? Hey, the they, remix of this song. There are mashups of Charlie Puth songs and Mariah songs. And since, you know, that is what songs with Mariah are these days, just mash up with the whole old songs. Mm. Like, it seems like that's an option. Weren't um, we, when we reacted to Light Switch, weren't we kind of like, oh, this is kind of like, get the fuck out? Were we? Um, did, weren't we compare, saying that in the video? Maybe I don't. I want to say I vaguely remember talking about Mariah Carey and Charlie Puth <laughs> in the same sentence before. It could happen. Um, but I also like the new Shawn Mendes song. Um, what I forgot what that one's called, but it's very good. Um, and uh, the other thing that I wanted to talk about is I have, after threatening to for so long, I have started watching euphoria i believe i am six or seven episodes and how do you feel about those dick pics (sighs) that dick pic sequence yeah there's i mean it's intense like it is a moment like it's certainly not the same feeling i feel at the end of abbott elementary another school show that's doing very well right now i love that jules is the main love interest it seems at this point at least for rue and and i love that she's trans and like what Nate and her father are doing to her I is know. keeping me up at night. Like, oh, I'm geez. so upset for this cool young lady. I just, I, I love the show so much. I'm invested. It's heartbreaking and like insane. And like, I've still not wrapped my hat around like this child who's the dealer or whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. Oh my God. But Did you see his interview after the Oscars? No. It's so funny. I forget the actor's name and I forget his character's name. What is this? Fesco? Fe- something like that. And oh, he- wait, no, I mean the child. There's an adult. Oh, the child. I'm talking about the child. <laughs> yeah, well, there's like the, I assume he's like 19 or 19, something, but yeah, then yeah. there's like his little brother or something. I know. Oh, and the it's child like drug dealer is Hilarious. Yes. I just, I'm invested, but I'm also like scared of you. I like, I feel like my thoughts of what I thought the show was going to make me feel are true, but I'm more interested in it and more like into it than I thought I would be. Right? Like so. I, when it was suggested to me, I was like, oh, teenager behaving badly. Like th- that sort of trope always kind of annoyed me and everything. Right. But I was like, you know what? I'll sit down and I'll watch it. And I was just like, but the way this is I done know. is so good. And Zendaya and is fantastic. She is fantastic. unbelievable. She is so great. And that's, I feel bad because I was rooting for Mandy to win Best Actress. And Zendaya did already win for this role. And so I would like Mandy to get it. But it's like, Bitch, I get it. Well, like, different seasons, though. You don't know seasons. what House and Die is in season how, two. I'm, she could flop in season I two. Imagine I don't she imagine don't imagine she does. She's just like, oh, wow. I didn't know. I mean, I knew you were beautiful. I knew you were a star, but I didn't know you were an actor. Yeah, she's very, she is very, great. very good and very convincing without like trying too right. hard. Like, because you could totally be like, oh, you take a pretty girl and mess up her hair a little totally. bit. Totally. And put her in take some. Take her off. Take her makeup off. Take her like, makeup off and like call her a lesbian and like, oh, she's so <laughs> grungy and everything. No, but it's I like, believe oh, her. no, but like you believe. I believe you genuinely every believe. moment. Yes. She's she's Shit. very good in it's Euphoria. It's a great show. Yeah, it is. Maybe. I mean, people are saying maybe we should have a watch party of season two. Yeah. So. Oh, that'd be if, kind of fun. We could watch because I haven't seen season two yet either. I just figured out how to get this podcast to work without killing us on Twitch. But if I can figure out a way to do a watch party, we will do it. It will be fun. We'll watch those kids have sex with each other. (laughs) Stuff we never even dreamed of doing. Oh, my God. You really need to watch that interview with the the drug dealer after the Oscars. He's he's like, he is. I don't want to make assumptions, but I assume he's high, right? I assume. (laughs) I'm just taking a wild guess. Yes. And he's just being interviewed by this woman who you can tell is trying so hard to get an mm. answer out of him. And he's and she's like, how do you feel? Da, 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 da. And he's like, yeah, uh, you know. Uh, <laughs> and then she just goes, is there a way to describe this moment? Or I forget what question she asked or whatever. And he just, in the sweetest voice, just goes, no, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> just saying, like, I would like Iconic. to not answer this Completely that harmless question just because so my brain funny. can't comprehend it. And it's like, you know, I feel like more people should say that in interviews. Yeah, it's just like, just like no. no thank you. That's what Daniel Radcliffe said when he was asked about something we will not mention. He said, he, he was just like, no, no thank, thank you. you. Which I appreciate. You know what? If we get an email in my heart that's really offensive, I'm going to like read the email out loud and just and go, said, no, no thank, thank you. you. I think that's fair. I think that is a, a, the way to go. Yeah. So that's what's been giving me moments. And, um, Thank you guys so much for listening and watching. This has been so much fun. And tuning in live on Twitch. Yes, I'm glad we're back in person. I'm glad we're back to being better. And I'm glad the Oscars are behind us. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Well, guys, thank you so much for listening and watching. And we'll be back next week with more Two Game Mats, the podcast. Bye, guys. Bye. Oh, I'm taking my sweater off. I'm sweltering. Oh, my. So-